Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and cover a few more questions off of the arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's see what we can learn. Number six, as the cost of a protein bar increased from 250 to 280, the percent increase to the 280 weight rate was how much? So if I'm looking at this, we're saying, okay, we're going from 250 to 280. What percent increase was that? Now, the easy way to do this is to just do 2.80 divided by 2.50, and that's going to end up giving you one point something, and that something is the percent increase. So in this case, one of these is going to be our percent that is going to go right here. So either 0 0.12, 0 0.15, 0 0.10, or 0.16. Unfortunately, we don't get to use a calculator. So this is not necessarily the easiest, like, quick division to do. So let's think of some other ways we could go about doing this. Well, 10% of 250 would end up being 25 cents because that would be shifting it over. Well, going from 250 to 280 is a 30 cent increase. 30 cent increase. So when I'm looking at this, the 10% is not going to be enough because it's only 25 but it was almost enough, so one of these other guys is going to be close enough to 10%, but not be too much of a hassle. So let's see. The 10% because of this, let's start with this guy because the next highest one. Let's look at 2%. What would 2% of 250 be? Is it going to be that 5 to get us there? I think it is. Let's take a look. If I do 2 times the 2.5, that indeed is going to give me the 5, and because this is a percent, move the decimal over twice. So that is going to give us the 0.05 that we need. So notice again, what did I do there? 10% of the 250 was 25 cents, and 2% of the 250 was just 5 cents by just doing 2 times the 2.5. And that together, 25 and 5, would give me 30. So this answer is indeed going to be D, 12. So number seven, you got two options here. We can either do this the mathematical way or the common sense way. I think we're going to take a look at the common sense. It says an aircraft flies over Boondock Air Force Base at 1020 a.m. At 1032 a.m., the plane passes over Seaside Naval Air Station 120 miles away. How fast is the aircraft traveling? So here's the deal. This is mere minutes. So we're looking from 20 to 32, which is 12 minutes of flying. Now, in those 12 minutes of flying, it looks like we're traveling 120 miles. Now, here's the problem. When you're doing miles per hour, you're not doing it by minutes. You're doing it by hours. So we could do all this math of converting the minutes to hours, figuring all that out. But that seems like just doing the most. Let's take a look here. If I'm going 120 miles in 12 minutes, that means that I am going 10 miles per minute. Because if I do 10 times 12, that gives me that 120 miles. So if you're going 10 miles per minute, that's going to get us our 120. Now here's the deal. How many minutes are there in an hour? Well, there's 60. So if I wanted to know how fast it's going per hour, then I can just do this 10 times 60. Well, what is 10 times 60? 600. So that means that if I'm going 120 miles in 12 minutes, that means I'm going 10 miles per minute, and there are 60 minutes in an hour, so I'm going a total of 60 miles per hour. That means our answer here is C. All right, looking at number eight, it says last year Margaret grew 50 bushels of corn in her backyard. This year, the yield has increased 8%. How many bushels of corn did Margaret grow this year? So in this case, we got to find what 8% of 50 is, add it back to the 50 to find out our new number here. So first off, there's lots of ways to quickly go about doing percentages. I'm just going to do the old-fashioned way of multiplying because it works every time. So we got 50 times that 0 0.08. You have to do the percent as a decimal. So if I'm doing this right here, we got 8 times 0, which is 0. Then we got 8 times 5, which is 40. All right. Then the zero is just going to go all through, so this is going to end up. Now, we do have two decimal numbers after the decimal here, so I'm going to take this for the answer and move it over twice to put our decimal. So that means that this answer is 4. So 8% of 50 is 4. Now, we are trying to increase the 50 by that much, so that means 50 plus that 4 is going to end up giving us 54, which means all said and done, our answer here is D.
So question like number nine are annoying because really you're just running a tally here as you go. But let's go ahead and try to break this down. Junior has saved money in his pity bank over the winter. He wants to buy a $30 computer game. If he has 14 $1 bills, 16 half dollars, 12 quarters, 8 dimes, 25 nickels, 10 pennies, how much more does he need to borrow from dad to buy the game? So let's take a look here. We're going to just run a, a tally as we go. I like running it up as we go because it's a little bit easier to do in your head since we don't have a calculator here. Starting off, we have $14. Then we have 16 half dollars. That means two of these would make a whole dollar. So I'm just going to divide this by two. 16 divided by two is eight. So that's going to give me eight dollars. Well, 14 plus the eight is going to give me $22 total starting off here. Then we're moving along 12 quarters. Well, there's four quarters and a dollar. So 12 divided by four is going to give me three. So now we're looking at adding those two $25. Eight dimes, that's going to be 80 cents. We'll come back to that in a second. 25 nickels. Well, I know that 20 nickels give me a dollar. So get rid of the 20 and I got one dollar here. The five nickels that are left over is five times five because nickels are five cents a piece. Five times five is going to give me 25 cents. Hey, check that out. 80 and 20 is going to give me another dollar and I'm going to be left with just that five cents. So now we have two here. So 25 plus the two, 27. And then we still have this five cents over here. Now we still have the 10 pennies, so 10 pennies right here. If I bring these two, the 10 cents and the 5 cents over here, we now have a total of $27.15. That's all of his money, so that means that we need to subtract this from the 30. Well, 30 minus 27 would be $3, but take away another 15 cents, and he only needs two eighty-five left. That means our final answer here is B. Let's take a look here at number 10. It says Debbie receives a weekly salary of $80 plus a 5% commission on any sales. During the week, she has 800 in total sales. What's the ratio of commission to her salary? Well, the first thing we got to do is figure out her commission. So she gets 5% of the total sales. So what is 5% of 800? Well, in order to find percents, you can always just multiply by the decimal form. But I actually think I might have a bit easier way of doing this, but let's take a look. So if I look at this, okay, 10%, 10% of 800 is going to be 80, right? Because I just moved the decimal place over one for 10%. With that said, 5% should be half of that. So if this is 10%, then 5% of it is going to be 40. So that means that for commission, Debbie is making $40 with her total check here, a weekly salary. And then with her salary portion of the week, that's $80, all right? And it says we want to know commission to salary. So commission to salary. Well, if I reduce this down, it's going to give me one over two. So that means the ratio for commission to salary should be one over two because we're reducing down from 40 over 80. So that's going to be answer B. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ABSVAT.